Now you're playing with power, superpower. Hi everyone, I'm Tyler, and welcome to another episode of Player One Start. Today we're going to talk about kind of an unusual device that I picked up a little while ago, and I thought I'd share it with you guys. The Game Saver Plus was released by Nokitech in the mid-90s. It acts as a bridge between the cartridge and the Super Nintendo. The Game Saver lets you hold your spot in the game so you can replay all the other levels just to get to a point where you can stop. The Game Saver itself is actually powered by the Super Nintendo's AC adapter, which actually has a pass-through that allows you to power your Super Nintendo with it as well. It also has a AA battery compartment on the back that will allow you to save your games while it's unplugged from the Super Nintendo. However, I heard the battery life on this is not very long. This allows you to save any game at any level at any time. You can restart instantly, and you can use it to save your game and take it over to someone else's place, plug their game in, and resume your game where you left off. The Game Saver Plus also offers a slow motion feature that has half-speed gameplay, along with distortion-free picture and sound. The history and development of this device is actually shrouded in a little bit of mystery. There's not very much documentation on this device. The only information I can find on this product was an advertisement that was apparently published in some video game magazines at the time. So I came across this item at a pawn shop. Actually, it's the same place where I got the Mattel and television. So that's kind of the reason why it's taken me so long to get to it. So the Naki Tech Game Saver Plus is what more or less is a cheat device. And what it allowed you to do was to pick up where you left off in your game and continue going at any point in time. Now keep in mind, this was at a point when a lot of games still didn't even have the option to save. For example, Disney's Aladdin never had a save point throughout the entire game. You had to play through the entire game or you had to get a password to pick up where you left off. So this is a device I would actually really love to have had when I was playing this as a kid. Actually, I still enjoy it today and I'll tell you a couple of reasons why. First, as I've gotten older, I actually don't have enough time to play one of these older games completely through because of the amount of time required. This also allows me to go back to a certain point and continue from there rather than where the game would have me start. For example, in Contra, you only get so many continues before it puts you back at the beginning of the game and you have to start all over. That again, adds to the time that you have to spend playing the game, and it's just something that I don't have enough time to do anymore. So I found out through some online forums that this device is actually really coveted by speedrunners. They'll use it to practice a part of the game that is giving them a lot of trouble. This way they don't have to actually replay the parts of the game that they've already mastered, they just have to focus on the areas that they're having trouble with. So that's actually added to the collectability of this device a little bit. Even though I don't speedrun, I'm still happy to have come across this item. So I wasn't able to find too much on the history of this device or the development. The only thing I can tell you is that it was most likely sold at places like Walmart. A lot of forms that I saw said that it didn't really sell very well. A lot of people who did buy this item ended up buying it on clearance at a discount in the later 90s. I think it came out in 1995, but it could be a little bit even before that time when they developed it. And it should be noted that not all games work with this device. There is a compatibility list for codes for games that aren't natively compatible with this device, but even still, not all games can work with it. Alright, the one game that I really wanted to try with this device was Donkey Kong Country. This is a game that gave me a lot of trouble as a kid because you could only save when you reached a save point. There were several times when I beat certain levels to a game and then got up to the level right before I would unlock the next save point, and I would die too many times and have to restart all the way back at the last save point. Many times this was in the previous stage. That's something I never really enjoyed about Donkey Kong Country. And I think it was actually tempered off a little bit because you can save almost at any point in time in the following sequels. So I thought it'd be appropriate to try out Donkey Kong Country as the first game of this device, so let's go ahead and take a look. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at what it takes to hook up the Navitech Game Saver into your Super Nintendo. So first I have everything turned around backwards so I can show you exactly what to do. You unplug the power cable from the SNES and plug it into the adapter. Kind of hard to do with one hand here. There we go. And then you'll plug in the power adapter from the cartridge into the back of the Super Nintendo. And then the next step is you're going to go ahead and plug in your game cartridge into the back of the Navitech Game Saver. 
There we go. And I'll go ahead and spin this around. Kind of gives you an idea of how unorganized it makes everything looks, but this actually works. And let's go ahead and turn on the game system. All right, when the game cartridge boots up, you get this screen that gives you a whole bunch of X's. This is actually where you're supposed to enter in some codes. Now, some games work with this device right off the bat, and others actually need you to enter a code. Donkey Kong Country needs one, so I'm going to enter it in here. When you've entered the code, you can go ahead and press the Start button, and the game will boot as usual. Now I've yet to do a proper review of the Donkey Kong Country series, but I've already done a live stream of kind of the first few stages of Donkey Kong Country, and there's a link popping up now if you guys want to check that out. So I'm going to go ahead and clear off one of these saves here and start from scratch. And here we go. You know, it may be tough for people to believe today, but this was actually very... These graphics were actually very mind-blowing for kids in the early 90s, especially that it was coming out of a 16-bit console. Ah, very iconic opening. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and save the state here. I'm gonna go and check out my empty banana hoard. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do a quick run through of this stage. Just kind of give you an idea of how the gameplay goes here. Actually, not going to get uh, Rambi at the moment. I'm just going to go ahead and play through here until I eventually die. There we go. And now I'm going to restart my game save, and it takes me back to the spot when I was right at the beginning of the stage. Now one thing you may notice is that the music from the level select screen is actually still playing now, and that's something that the Navitech Game Savers documentation notes, is that if you save the state when the music is different, it actually will keep playing the wrong music throughout your stage. It's kind of weird to play the stage like this. However, if you end up changing the music at all, going to a part that requires different music, like this bonus stage, then the music's going to start playing appropriately again. And now that I'm back on the regular stage, again, the music starts playing again, just like normal. I'm going to go and play this bonus stage here. I'm going to do another game save, just in case I mess this up. Alright. Ah, yeah, see, and I got the wrong one here, so I'm going to go ahead and resume my state. Notice how the music quit playing, because it thinks I'm done with the bonus stage. There we go. However, it still plays the victory music when I'm done. And look, I've beaten the first stage of the game. Donkey Kong Country is a game that already has an ability to save built within the game, but I decided to go ahead and try this out on a game that would not have a game save ability built into it. Now, I can't test out every single game I own with this because that would take forever, but here are a couple other games that I thought I'd try it out on. Again, on this next game, I'm going to have to change the code. This actually requires two lines for the next game I want to do. Here's a game that is almost synonymous with the 16-bit era, mainly because the 3D incarnation that came out for the N64 wasn't really up to the standards that these series had set so far.
I'm going to go ahead and just like before, I'm going to save my state at the very beginning of the game. And then I'm going to go through playing this game rather horribly. Uh, part of this is on purpose and part of it isn't. So, <laughs> but uh, let's go ahead and play through this. I'm, I apologize for those that cringe at the gameplay of this. Alright, let's go ahead and load back my previous save state. And now I'm free to try this stage again. Maybe I'll do a little bit better this time, but it didn't start out very well. Alright, so overall, what are my thoughts on the Nakitech Game Saver Plus? Well, I think this device is actually well worth the money I spent for it. I'm not quite sure what it actually goes for because I can't always find it online and maybe if you did some search on eBay or some other websites, you might be able to find a good price for it. For someone like me who has to capture game footage, this is a perfect device. It actually saves the amount of time keeping me from having to go back to a previous stage if I can save my game state while I'm capturing and then just pick up where I left off later. If you keep the device plugged in, you can virtually save your game state forever as long as power isn't lost. And if you're so inclined, you can use the batteries to keep it saved in the meantime if the power ever does go out. I've heard though that the battery life on this thing is not very good, such as I heard it compared to things like the Game Gear and the Nomad, and those things were notorious for sucking batteries dry very quickly. So that's not something I ever plan to use with this device, and I haven't really tested it myself. Other than that, I didn't really find any game that this didn't work with. I suspect that it would not work with games newer than 1995 that use some advanced hardware. I haven't tried it, but I've heard Yoshi's Island actually is not compatible with this device. So I would think that the games released after this device came out uh, may not be supported. This device is not without its flaws, but I think overall for what it's supposed to do, I think it does the job very well. I will say beware that if the power is ever disturbed in this device, it will lose your game state. So if you are uh, using this on a device that actually can save to the cartridge, I would do both. It's nice to have a backup whenever you're playing the game. Of course, the solution today is to have your game saves back up to the cloud. All right, well, that about wraps it up for this video. Remember, if you like what you see, please hit that like and subscribe button, share with a friend, Remember, you can reach out to me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I want to thank you so much for watching, and stay tuned because I have more content coming. I'll see you guys next time. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video as I really enjoyed making it for you. If you did like this video, please let me know by leaving a like and a comment below. Let me know what you liked about the video. Let me know what you guys would like to see in the future. And if you'd like to see some of the other videos I've already done, there should be some popping up here, 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 everywhere. I wonder what YouTube would look like with safe states. I wonder what YouTube would look like with save states. I wonder what YouTube would look like with save states. I wonder what YouTube would look like with save states.